was born into it. And I was saying, oh, oh, you hear me? Oh, oh, hey, hey, you guys, hey, hey. Every weekend, this church on Burma's border is filled with the spirit of the Old Testament. But the majority of Karen are still Buddhist or animist. More than two-thirds of Bohemia's soldiers and their families are not Christian. Still, he imposes a strict Christian code of conduct on them. Christian and Buddhist Karen have been fighting on the same side for nearly 50 years. But the recent losses have been high. Hundreds of mainly Buddhist soldiers were killed or wounded in Rangoon's huge 1992 offensive. Afterwards, families began sending their sons to temples to become monks rather than fighters. Religion has become the key to Manipur's fall, and already the tensions are beyond repair. <laughs> These Buddhist monks remain loyal to the Karen National Union. But a group belonging to a vegetarian order, along with hundreds of Buddhist soldiers, have deserted the ranks to join the enemy's side. The Karen leadership, which includes this senior monk, blames the slork for instigating the split. <laughs> ตีรอเนี่ยอ๋อเสียชายเลยตีรอบัวเราแค่ไหนตุดานเนี่ยฮีโคลฮีจีเลยเลยปวยๆบ่มเลยเนี่ยอะซิว่าตุดานเนี่
Manaflor is protected by a long, high ridge which runs behind it. We're hitching a ride up to see the Slork's position on the other side. The logs are to build more bunkers. From here, you can look straight at the enemy on Sleeping Dog Mountain. The strategic position was taken by the Burmese army in 1992. This was where hundreds of Karen soldiers and civilians were killed. In one of the KNU's military hospitals, a 14-year-old goes through a daily agony. His bullet wounds have to be dressed. How can you bear watching all the young Karen men go off to either get killed or, or come back wounded? The Karen have been fighting successive regimes in Rangoon for nearly 50 years. Fathers and sons have fought and died, and generations of daughters have grown up to be nurses. <laughs> Trouble within the KNU has proved disastrous for the Burmese students, who still dream of a democratic Burma with the detained Aung San Suu Kyi as head of state. They're adults now, but most were teenagers when they arrived at the border. School kids who fled the 1988 massacres in which thousands of students and pro-democracy demonstrators were killed by the military. Another wave of youthful idealism arrived after the political crackdown of 1990. This is no casual boat trip. There are slow troops in the hills and the students and their leader are at risk. Dr. Nayong agreed to show us the student army's headquarters, which was recently overrun by Burmese troops. It's about an hour by boat from Manipur. The area is still full of the landmines the students planted before their emergency evacuation across the river to Thailand. They came down from the distance uh, through the slopes and along, along with the streams. It can reach to the northern part of the camps. That's the easiest way in, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And I think they're trying to approach to the headquarter area, but uh, uh, they crash with the landmine, so they have some injury, and so they retreat back. Up to 1,000 students have been pushed off their own soil. There's no security in Burma anymore. Their new temporary base is this village, only a kilometre inside Thailand and within easy range of the Burmese army if it wished to strike. Militarily, uh, it's very difficult to uh, move and defence and resist against them because they can deploy more forces and we cannot have uh, 